Hey, welcome to the Board Game Network. This is James here. I'm going to be talking about how to play this game called Vikings the Board Game. Vikings the Board Game. Uh, it is based on the uh, History Channel TV show called Vikings. It plays two to five players in an hour and a half to two hours for 13 years and up. Uh, let's get right into it. This is our setup here. Each player takes a long ship. They get uh, 20 gold. They are going to have two fabrics, which are the white cubes. You'll notice over here, this is white, and it says fabric up there. You'll have three food, which is the green over here. You are going to have spoils, which are just off to the side because you don't have them yet, but they are in your color also, which is, matches the background of the longship and the background of your cubes here. You're going to have one cube here to keep track of exploration points. You're going to have one cube here at home, which is your long ship, and you're going to travel around uh, with your long ship. You're going to have one cube on the 30 to start with for the winter season. And you're going to have one cube over here on influence when you start the game. The game lasts over three years, and it has two phases. It has winter and summer. Winter is intended for you to rebuild, recoup, and fill your longship. And the summer is for exploration and raiding. So in the winter, you, you decide your influence. You decide your hero. You're going to get a hero. You stock your longship and you get seer cards also. So here's what a long ship looks like. Uh, here's your areas on the long ship that you can store stuff. Gold does not get stored on here. So it, uh, it's just off to the side. Everything else takes up one space except for spoils. You'll notice spoils have a wider base to them, so they would take up two spaces on a ship. These are these rune stones here are you just keep those off to the side. Those are yours. Uh, whenever you uh, get some, you're going to take those. They match your color. The exploration track, gold and victory points are just set off to the side here. And victory points look like these triangles. The player, every turn, the player with the most days left is the next player to go. And so uh, as you're moving along, everything costs you days. And so you're going to move your boat along here a certain number of days. And so whoever's got the most days will be the next player. And he might go two or three times in a row, maybe. If there's a tie for the, for the most number of play, uh, days left, then whoever has the highest influence will go first. And highest influence would be the number one space. Uh, in the winter, let's just go through the steps for winter. And so that's the first phase. And you can look at your gameplay reference on the back of your uh, user's manual there, your instructions. Uh, the first thing you do is you move all ships to home. So if they haven't made it home, they get transported home. The exploration points, now there's a few things here that aren't going to happen in year one because nothing has happened yet. But this is where they belong in the sequence. So once you've gone through the summer and you've accumulated some of this stuff and then you go back to winter of year two and winter of year three, then these things will happen. The exploration bonus, and that's for this track here, whoever's got the most exploration gets a three point victory point bonus. So you're just going to grab three victory points to keep. And exploration happens by flipping over tiles where you explore. As you flip over water tiles, as you flip over land tiles, you actually are going to get a, an exploration 
point for that and so you're going to keep track of your exploration points each season here. You're going to get one victory point for every placed ruin stone. So if you have ruin stones, those get set out into uh, the water or the land. You're not going to put them in the water. You're going to put them in the land and uh, that actually reduces the number of days that you spend uh, exploring so it reduces your number of days. And so you get one victory point for each one of those that have been placed in that uh, year. You are going to complete seer card. So if you have a seer card here it tells you what the cost is. It tells you what your benefit is for that card. It tells you victory points for the card. Now the icons on here on the left here, those are uh, items you have to discard to be able to uh, fulfill this card. The ones on the right are things that you have either done this season or uh, you just have on your boat but they but you don't discard them you don't get rid of them so the ones on the right are things that have occurred this year prior to returning home you are going to collect the victory point here it tells you in the lower left the victory points uh, you are going to place it under your long ship if it has an ongoing effect you want it face up so you can see that if it does not you put just put it face down there is also a common seer and that one's just face up on the deck and anybody can do that and so even multiple people can do that one and fulfill it at this point. So the third step in the winter is to convert exploration points and the first thing you get to do is you can sell exploration points for gold. So you get three gold for every exploration point you want to do and then from after that then one to five exploration points can get traded for one VP each. Six to ten is two, eleven to fifteen is three, sixteen to twenty is four. Now that doesn't apply to all victory points, that only apl applies to those within that group. So for example if you had six exploration points like this here you would get seven victory points because the first five are worth one each and then the sixth one is worth two. And so you're just going to reset your exploration points and you're going to take victory point uh, triangle tokens. Now this is where year one is really going to start in the winter. You're going to adjust the trade house. Fabric, cash, and warriors get um, filled up to the number of players. So you're going to take with, if we have four players here, you're going to fill up from the bottom and put four fabric in each space. Now in future years these are going to slide down and you're only going to fill at the top. So if this was the case that we had this one empty, these would all slide down. And the sliding down thing happens, let's say we only have one in this box, then this one would slide down, the others would slide down and you put four in the top for year two or year three. <clears throat> Same thing with cash. Cash starts with the number of players, so four cubes in each space. Warriors is also the same, so you're going to start with four warriors in each space. And food is the number of players plus three. So you're going to start with seven food in each space. And the exotic goods here do, n do not ever get um, put on like this. They only get put on when you sell them and they'll get filled from the top to the bottom. Here is the price of these items here on the left. This is one, two, three, four, five. 
So when you're selling and there are none in here, you're, you're going to start with five down, going down. Mm -hmm. And when you're buying, you're starting at the bottom and going up. Okay, so you're going to reveal the seer and hero cards. First thing you do is shuffle, and then you take the number of players plus one. So we're going to deal up five seers. And we're going to deal out five heroes. The rest of these cubes just go at the top up here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We are then going to place our land and sea. So what we do is we shuffle all the sea tiles, just face down. Then you're going to shuffle um, the land, and the way the land works is you're going to separate those. You'll have a Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three on the backs of them. This means year one, year two, year three. You are going to take all of the year ones with the V Viking symbol at the bottom of them, bottom of them, keep those. You're going to take the ones without the Viking symbol and remove randomly three of them and take them out of the game. You're going to insert one mountain and you're going to shuffle all of those face down. And then you're going to place one row of those around the outside edge. So you should have exactly the right amount to make it around one, one row around for year one. I'll just go ahead and tell you that for year two, you're going to take all of the tiles that have the Viking V at the bottom. You're going to take the ones without the V at the bottom and remove three randomly from year two. And you're going to put two mountains in and then you're going to mix those up. And those at the, in this phase in the, in the uh, winter of year two, you're going to put another row of land out here. And then year three, you're going to do the same thing with the, uh, the V ones. You're going to keep all of them. The ones without the V, you're going to remove three randomly. And you are going to insert three mountains in those and mix those up. So the number of mountains equals the year you're on. Once this is done, you have what's called the rumor uh, step. And the rumor step lets everybody look at two land tiles. So you're going to secretly pick up two and get to look at them and see what they are, each player. Then you bid for influence. And so you have gold over here. And so you're going to secretly bid for how much you want to pay for influence. And whoever bids the most gets to pick where he wants to be, what space, one, two, three, or four in a four player. So you can actually not want to be first. Uh, at the beginning, at the highest influence, there are certain advantages like being able to get your hero and seer first. But being in lower influence, you actually get to buy resources first. And the person who buys first gets the cheaper rate for resources usually. If there's a tie, you roll the dice to see who wins, and then the highest player chooses the highest die roll. Uh, then you recruit heroes based on your influence order. So if we did it this way, then blue would get to choose a hero. From the heroes that had been dealt up, so let's just say blue picked that one, and then pink would go, and pink picks this one, and yellow picks this one, and teal picks this one, and then this one, this one just gets discarded. You are limited in your number of heroes to one per year. So if you're in year two, you can have two heroes. If you're in year three, you can have three heroes. 
Then you do trade house. Trade house happens in reverse influence. So this, uh, the teal gets to go first. And what you do is you can buy resources over here in the trade house. And here's the cost, one. And so, let's say teal um, wants to buy, I don't know, depends on whether they're raiding or exploring or what. So we got some food, let's get some, a couple more food and some warriors and cash and fabric. Water, well, going across the water really costs fabric for your, for your sales and it costs food. So you want to make sure you have plenty of those. And you'll notice you two, four, six, eight, ten. You only have ten spaces. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So then that costs ten, so you pay ten. You load your boat up with the cubes that you just bought. Or you may want to leave an open space or two and not completely fill it up. You can also sell at the trade house if there's things that you don't want, if there's some of the stuff on your boat that you didn't want to start, or if more likely in year two or year three you brought stuff back and you want to sell it, what you do is you sell it for the cost here, minus one and a minimum of one. So starting with these down here, you would actually get one minus one is zero, but you would get one for a minimum. And then those ones you sold, would go on here on the space. Um, if there's no more room, if it fills up and hits its max, then you just, just put them up here. And that's how you fill up the fur, the spices, and the ore. Uh, the fur, spices, and ore are going to be expensive when you first sell them. And the exotic resources, the fur, the spice, and the ore, those are limited to two uh, cubes per, per space. And the ex exotic ones, they're just kept in here in the bag because you're going to be drawing them randomly most of the time. So they are just little cubes like this with different colors on them. And they match the colors of the background there. Then you're going to select the seer and this, this happens in influence order also. So blue gets to pick first. So blue would look through the seers. Pick one. Then pink would pick one, and yellow would pick one, teal would pick one, and then the other one becomes the common seer that everybody can uh, try to uh, accomplish at the end of the year. Now if you look at these seers, they tell you on them, this one says a hard raid. This one means that that's going to be a hard one to do normally. There is, here's a medium trade, here's an easy explore. So they have he, easy, medium, and hard. They have explore, they have trade, and they have raid. So as a general rule, if you want to solve this one, you're going to need to go raiding. So you want to have warriors on your ship to try to do this one. Uh, trading, you want to have other items on there so you can do a trade thing to try to get the items you need. And exploring means you're going to be looking around a lot. The calendar marker, in year one we started with 30 days. This is a day track. In year two you're going to jump up to 35. In year three you're going to jump up to 40 when you get days back. And then that's the end of the winter season. And then you go into summer, phase two. So you're halfway there. And uh, the rules talk about the first time playing this to start here, just start with the summer. Uh, it has a different setup over here for filling up your boat and stuff instead of going through that. Um, at the beginning of the summer, you start with your boat sh at home. 
you then do movement. So whoever has the most number of days, remember influence order if there's a tie. So Blue's going to go first. He's going to come out here. He's going to flip over a tile and then move on to it. And Blue, if any, any tile that gets flipped over and you move on to and you pay the cost of, you actually get to move this on your exploration track to keep track of your exploration. Now this says it costs three days because there's three circles so blue will go down one, two, three and it costs food so he discards the food up here and it costs fabric which is white. Now I didn't buy stuff for these these other people over there but you can see how that works and uh, then it's the next player's turn and you look once again it's a tie so pink would go and pink could go on this same one if they wanted to they would not get the exploration bonus for it uh, or you could flip over a new tile and then get that exploration bonus and pay the cost this one costs one day two foods and two fabric you always have to interact with the sea whether no matter what it's flipped up or turned over whereas the land is optional if you move on to it you don't have to do what it the options on it if it's a face up you always have to pay all the costs for the sea you cannot choose not to interact with the sea uh, you pay if you stay there or if you move on to it move move off move on back onto it you have to pay those costs over again but the land you can choose not to interact in other words not do what it might tell you to do this says pay two days and get a warrior well the land you still pay the day cost but you don't have to do anything else on it you would probably want the warrior but there's other costs on some of the other tiles that one gives you a benefit and some of them are more expensive as for year two and year three that one gives you food this one has it costs three and then you lose warriors to gain spoils so on this one if you landed on this one you'd still have to pay the number of days but you would not have to lose the warriors if you didn't want to interact with the tile and get the spoils. You can have any number of players on the land or the sea. There's no limit. The village icon on the space here you need to check the icons up at the top to see how many players can be on that here's five icons there five icons five icons which means any number of players can be there but this only has one 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 so there's some of them that only have one so you can only have one on there one person on there at a time you cannot stay in the same space on a vill on any of the village tiles the home doesn't really cost anything but when you're moving from here and you want to go up here you just skip over the home or if you want to come from up here anywhere and go out here you skip over the home this is actually one space from here to any tile up here and any tile up here to any other tile or out to one of these water spaces is all one space when you flip over the tile you have to pay all the costs and then you get the one exploration you, if you can't pay the costs, you place an exploration token on the tile to be picked up later. If, if you come back later or somebody else comes back later, they can pick up that exploration token. So if you can't pay all the costs, you throw a token down. That goes with the land too. Because you only get that exploration if you're flipping the tile over. So if somebody comes by later and the tile's already flipped up, they still can get that exploration token because it was not explored the first time and so they would just take it and move their exploration marker up. Um, if you can ever, if there's ever a time when you can't pay the day cost, you immediately go home and that see your season is over at that point. Now, when you're coming out here to land, if you come over here and you get ready to flip over, 
you flip over the tile, you can put a ruined stone down if you have one on your boat. So let's say you had some rune stones over here. Then you can put that down before you move on to it and it costs one less day to do that. You're limited to one rune stone on a tile, but uh, it reduces the number of day costs for you by one. And if you come back and visit that tile again or anybody else comes back and visits the tile, their cost is reduced also. Now some of these seers require that you've placed ruined stones out and so if let's say one seer requires two ruined stones, one seer requires three ruined stones, if you're going to try to complete both of those seers you need to have five ruined stones out. You cannot overlap so that this, this two from one counts as the two from another one also. And once you've paid the cost, whatever the cost is, you get that reward. So this one says pay three days and get two fish or two food. So once you've paid your three days off here on the, on the track, you're going to take um, two, two food and you're just going to take them from the top up here, not from the market. And you're going to put them on your boat. If you don't have room on your boat, you can dump something overboard and, and not use it get rid of it to fill up your boat. And you do want to have, uh, remember, food and fabric as you head back across the water because if you don't, then you're going to be in trouble. On year two tiles, let's look at a year two tile. On year two tiles, you have things like this. It says plus two and then one in parentheses. And what that means is draw two and you may discard one and redraw. So this is the exotic fabrics or exotic tiles here. So you draw two out of the bag. You decide, hey, you know what, I really don't want this. The spices, you throw the spice back in the bag and you draw one over again. Or you can keep it if you want to. On the year three tiles, you have a plus three slash two and what that means is draw three keep two of the exotic resources. There are tiles out here that say hero one, hero two, something like that. And what that means is you, you hero two, you draw this many heroes, so you're going to draw two hero cards from the hero deck. Let's put the seer card on the seer deck. You draw two heroes and you keep one and you reshuffle the, the discard one back into the deck. You are limited to one hero per year, so on the second year you can only have two heroes. Um, there's, there's tiles that say only when explored and what that means is you do not get the benefit unless you actually successfully explored the tile so you flipped it over and did an explore. So if you come back later you can't interact with that tile anymore because it's already been explored. The mountains always cost five days. It doesn't matter where the mountains are at and it takes five days off of you but there is zero benefit for the mountains except for you won't have to go back out to sea to get around them or uh, if you have mountains out here you could go around them on land. It might be cheaper. Raid X or raid a certain number. This says raid 5. What that means is you have to have five warriors on your ship and then it subtracts a certain number of them to get your spoils. So you lose four warriors on this tile. You have to have five though to actually do the raiding. You lose four of them, you gain two spoils. Again, those spoils take up two spaces on your boat. So you'd have to have four spaces available to be able to take both of those spoils. You also have a trade tile. And trade works just like as if you were uh, doing trading at the beginning of the uh, with the winter season where you do trading here where you can buy and sell items. Remember you sell at one less than whatever the 
the current one is. So in this case where there's four up here, four fabric on the two, you would actually, this would be where you're throwing your uh, cube. So one would be one minus one is zero with a minimum of one. So if you had this space open and you were selling your cubes into the two space, you would get one also. If you were selling into the three space, you'd be selling them for two and dumping them the, into the three space. Works just like the trade house up here on this style. Uh, substitutions. If you're at C and you can't pay all the costs, so it costs you two fabric on this one. Let's say you don't have two fabric. For each fabric that you don't have, you lose two days. For each food that you don't have, you lose two warriors. Those warriors starved. For If you have two warriors, uh, they can be uh, traded for two victory points or Valhalla points, VP. Uh, that's what the triangles are. It costs you two VP uh, if you can't pay two warriors. If you have one warrior, you can't pay uh, your one warrior short, you go ahead and keep the warrior and lose the two VP. It is possible to have negative VP, you're just going to have to score that somehow. On the village tile here, these items come from the stockpile. When you're doing this buying and selling here, you're actually taking them from the stockpile here, unless you're at the trade house. The trade house happens here. But all the other ones where you, it costs you a day and you get coins, then the coins are going to come from the coin stash over there. Um, this one costs two days to get warriors. Well, the warriors are going to come out of the stash up here, not from the market. Here is the seer. The seer cost two days, but you get three victory points for each card that you complete. So each seer card that you come back, you are going to get three extra victory points for completing it. You swap the seer, which means you discard that seer, you draw three new seers, and you keep one and shuffle the other ones back into the deck. Or the other option is at the seer tile is to complete any number of seers, you get three victory points per seer, you draw three, keep one, and reshuffle. So one of the choices is to swap your seer, and the other one is to complete any number of seers, and that's when you get the victory points, the three victory points. Jarl here lets you get spoils, and the way spoils works is it costs you two days, it costs, for each spoil you bring back, you can sell it for 10 gold or 5 victory points. Now at the end of the game you only get 3 victory points per spoil so you get a better deal here if you bring it in here but you may need gold instead because gold lets you buy a lot of other things. The ruin stones here uh, it costs you take the number of gold divided by 2 and that's how many ruin stones you can get so this shows two gold. Um, you subtract two gold, you get one rune stone. And all the rest of these are self-explanatory. They all cost some day and then give you some item. Uh, this is the end of the summer, and the last person ha when the when the last person gets to zero days, that's when summer ends. So. Um, as long as there are cubes out here with any days on them, then summer is continuing. Once that's happened, once summer is over, you remove any exploration tokens from the sea tiles because those have gone away magically. It's the sea after all, you know. They kind of clean up after themselves. The exploration tokens on land, however, stay there. Uh, you get plus one exploration token on any face down land, so you're going to go by at this point and throw exploration tokens on any of your face down land. And that's just going to accumulate. And then that is one whole year's worth of rules 
on how to play and so then you go back into the winter steps that I explained at the beginning of the video uh, year two you're gonna throw out another row of land out here you're gonna restock over here all those things uh, back here on your gameplay reference and so you are simply attempting to get the highest score at the end of the game you get to complete your final seer cards at the end of year three if possible you and if you don't complete a seer card you're just going to keep that seer card and maybe you can complete it in a future year uh, anytime you can't complete your seer cards you really need to complete seer cards that's how you make uh, get your victory points and, and stuff. You convert any remaining exploration points to victory points. You exchange exp each spoil that you bring back for victory points, for three victory points. You convert every four gold into one victory point. You add all of the above victory points to any victory points, any other victory points that you acquire during the game and then come up with your total and that's how you determine who wins the game. Now there are on these seer cards there are words, key words on here like complete and instant and splash and landfall and all of those are explained right here on your gameplay reference like the word deepest. Deepest means the last row so deepest year one would just be the first row but deepest on year three would have to be the farthest row, the third row of land out here and so you just need to follow through that when you're trying to complete your seer cards to make sure you're doing that right. So this is a uh, lot of rules there and I would have to say somebody needs to edit the rule book and make it um, more, um, I don't know what's the word I want to say it kind of repeats itself in some places, it leaves holes in the rules in other places, it doesn't explain things well. Um, a note out there to any game designers who are watching this, play test, play test, play test. Have at least four different groups play testing and don't stand by them. Videotape the play test sessions and do not give them instructions. Make them read it from the rule book and you won't be putting out rule books that are like this one. Uh, this is a good game. This is a fun game. It's a well-designed game. The rule book stinks. So make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network. <laughs>